So we have um, a lot of different treatment options and a lot of different treatment strategies for our patients with previously untreated CLL. And traditionally, we, us we usually try to, before we start any sort of treatment for CLL, we try to assess the level of coexisting conditions in these patients. And this is necessary because CLL usually occurs in elderly patients with a median age of 72 years. And therefore, it's of particular importance to know what are the comorbidities that the patient might carry in order to know what kind of treatment can we uh, can we uh, can we provide? So we have um, options of intensive chemo monotherapy that might be more feasible in, in younger and fit patients, and we might have mild chemo monotherapy for elderly and unfit patients. And now with the advent of the new compounds, we have. Um, targeted agents that we can give for fit and as well as unfit patients, but we um, until um, recently we didn't really have a clear um, uh, comparison of of chemo monotherapy or mild chemo monotherapy to targeted agents. So the challenge that we had before was that we can we, or we could provide um, elderly and unfit patients with mild chemo monotherapy that was quite tolerable and did achieve a certain amount of efficacy, but it was um, uh, a much less efficacy than what we observed with, with other um, uh, uh, treatments that we provide to younger and fitter patients. So there was, so there was a definitely a lack of, um, of efficacy for these elderly patients and the aim of using now the BCL2 inhibitor venetoclax in combination with the CD20 antibody obinutuzumab was to somehow achieve higher efficacy, but at the same time maintain the tolerability in elderly and unfit patients. And that's why we used venetoclax obinutuzumab over 12 cycles uh, in comparison to 12 cycles of chloramosyl obinutuzumab as one of the standard of care for elderly and unfit patients. CLL14 is a randomized phase 3 trial, and in that trial, patients with previously untreated CLL and coexisting conditions were randomized to either receive chloramosyl obinutuzumab uh, over 12 cycles, so 6 cycles of obinutuzumab and overall 12 cycles of chloramosyl, um, and patients were alternatively randomized to receiving venetoclax obinutuzumab, again with 6 cycles of obinutuzumab and overall 12 cycles of venetoclax, and all patients stopped treatment after 12 cycles. So this was a fixed duration treatment for all patients. And uh, the primary endpoint of this study um, is the progression-free survival. And the primary analysis of this trial showed that uh, patients receiving venetoclax-based therapy had a significantly longer progression-free survival than patients receiving chemomonotherapy. And the aim of the analysis now was to understand the long-term follow-up of these patients, as we've previously seen that uh, the treatment is quite efficacious in patients with un previously untreated CLL. And now it was important to see, as all patients are off treatment now for at least two years, to see how these patients are performing now in the long term, how are long-term toxicities, how are the depth of responses in those patients, how are the minimal residual disease levels. So a lot of questions that can be answered with a, with a long-term follow-up. The long-term observation of these patients has allowed us first to uh, understand what happens to those patients once they are off treatment. And what we do see now is that patients treated with venetoclax obinutuzumab overall maintain their PFS benefit compared to chemomonotherapy. So what we see now um, at three years that the PFS rate is with venetoclax obinutuzumab 82%, whereas it is 50% approximately in patients who had received chloramosyl obinutuzumab. So we see a maintained PFS benefit for patients treated with venetoclax-based therapy. And the other things that we see is that um, as we are monitoring the levels of minimal residual disease in the peripheral blood in those patients, also once they are off treatment. So we are continuing to assess the MRD in peripheral blood um, every six months in our patients. And what we see is that in approximately half of the patients, the MRD levels are maintained. So we see that um, approximately 50% of patients um, still have undetectable MRD levels uh, in, in the, in the venetoclaxobinutuzumab group, in contrast to just 7% in patients who have been treated 
treated with chloramosolubin or tuzumab. And we also looked at the MRD levels um, with different sensitivities using also, using also NGS technology. And what we see is that, um, that the, most of the patients who lose their MRD negativity, so to speak, in the venetoprax arm keep um, low MRD levels. So we don't see an increase Although half of the patients does not have undetectable MRDs anymore, um, only a very few patients develop disease progressions. So overall, only, we do, do, do only see 21 disease progressions um, of CLL after patients have come off venetoclax, subunutuzumab, and overall only nine patients have actually required the next line of therapy. So there's a considerable treatment-free duration for patients who have received um, venetoclax, subunutuzumab. The fixed duration approach is um, seems to be beneficial um, in in this study cohort or this patient cohort um, for all uh, biological and clinical risk groups. So we observe the benefits in patients with unmutated IGH3 as well as mutated IGH3 status. We also see see the benefits in patients carrying T three fifty three aberrations and other high risk um, uh, factors. So all patients overall seem to benefit from the treatment. Um, there are no clear con contraindications um, uh, for for this treatment yet. So um, we didn't include patients who had uh, an uh, end stage renal failure. So no patients um, who were on dialysis were enrolled, and also patients who had uh, creatinine clearance below thirty milliliters per minute um, were enrolled in this trial so we don't have any data on those uh, on this group of patients yet um, and otherwise uh, it is of course the question uh, um, what other options do we have for our patients so in general this trial only enrolled patients who have who, with coexisting conditions it's it, the, the treatment is however approved both by the FDA and the EMA for all patients with previously untreated CLL so also patients with um, with who are fit might be eligible for this treatment because we do see these overwhelming deep responses um, even in these elderly unfit patients. So this treatment might also be suitable for some patients um, who are fit and previously untreated. So overall, in general, one can say this is a suitable option for patients with previously untreated CLL and also um, uh, it might be uh, or caution is warranted when patients have end-stage renal failure because we don't have any data for, for this group of patients uh, in, in this study.